Hello my friends and welcome we have the awesome update from the front lines we are speaking about the Bakhmut area and Andreevka village. Today it was liberated by Ukrainian army and Russians moved out. Just the last week we saw how Ukrainian army used lots of the artillery shells on that village plus the J dams. Let's check out the timeline for today. It was yesterday and it is today. It's been confirmed that Russia moved out but still, our infantry is not yet deployed fully on that village, that is why it is still in the grey zone, but no Russians are there. Still, there are two of the villages that Ukraine needs to deoccupy in a close-by perspective. We are speaking about the Kurdimivka and Ozaranivka. Here, it's more complicated, because those villages are located on the high ground, and Russia deployed more forces over there. But still, this distance from Klishivka to Andreevka is pretty much okay to continue the assault towards Opetne, northeast, or to Odradivka on the south. But I wouldn't leave those Russian forces behind the front lines, so the counterattack should be planned towards this direction also. Otherwise, Russia may counterattack from the south towards the assaulting Ukrainian forces. Alright, now to the main news. It was very loud near to Yevpatoria, Crimea this morning. Some of the locals were very lucky to get up early and film this event. The fresh sea breeze, magnificent sky and smoke coming from the Russian Triumph, the best air defense system. It looks like it's not the best one after all, because it's the second time it was targeted by rockets. This is the satellite image of this Russian air defense base, and there are lots of the S-400 Triumph air defense systems, which as reported were targeted but yet we don't have the actual footage coming from the place and it's very restricted area so i don't think that those images would finally appear in the internet but we have the confirmation from officials that russia lost the very neat raider plus s400 there were also reports that russia used the very unique raiders that were able to detect the flying objects for dozens of kilometers away russia used those to identify the ukrainian flying drones and cruise missiles Yevpatoria is not far away from Saki, and one year ago the military airfield of Russia was demolished by the Ukrainian Neptune rockets. Here Ukraine again used Neptune in combination with a drone attack. The same legendary Neptune that was used to target the Russian Moskva ship. So now basically Russia is without any eyes on the western side of the Crimean Peninsula. They need to send more of the systems out there, but those will be less effective compared to the raiders that were made in the Soviet Union but still were very effective. Just want to show you the exact place of Yevpatoria. It's over here. The military base is not far away from the beach. Saki is here. There is the Russian military airfield that was attacked one year ago. Just recently, around two weeks ago, Ukraine targeted the S-400 Triumph system near to Olenivka on this side. And yesterday there was a tag on Sevastopol where Russia lost the submarine and the ship. By the way, it's the first recorded case in the history that the cruise missile targets the submarine. By the way, we have the image from those dry docks. This is the big landing ship. As you can see, the upper part of the ship is totally burned out, so this ship is no go. It will be just scrapped and not restored, completely lost for the Russian army. Then I shared it on my Telegram channel. Guys started to laugh about it, saying that at least it's already in the dry docks for repairs and it's just a scratch or something like that. I guess my followers have the specific sense of humor like I do. <laughs> it would be interesting to see the video about the boat that is located nearby. Hopefully we're gonna see it soon. Today Ukraine tried to target one more Russian ship, the name of which is Sergei Kotov. We got the official information about it from the Russian Defense Ministry and actually it is true. This is the ship, it's much newer compared to the one that was in the dry docks. It is mostly used for patrolling purposes, it has the landing spot, so Ukraine tries to get rid of it by using the drone boats. Again, we have the video presented by the Special Services of Ukraine. You can see the boat is going. 
the ship opens the fire you can see the traces and unfortunately one of the bullets went inside the boat and we have the recording from other boat there was the big kaboom i guess not of the ship but of the drone boat we don't have the evidence that this ship was definitely targeted honestly i would modernize those drone boats to carry some sort of the rockets on board yes i understand that in that case the crew of the enemy ship would identify the position of the drone and the stealth operation would not be possible but in most of the cases russians identify those drone boats and eliminate them by using the machine guns or other guns so a couple of the missiles from the standard soviet rocket artillery system would make the life for the crew of the ship different by the way at the beginning of the war then russia put their ships close to odessa one of the ships was downed with the help of their rocket artillery system so why not to use those on the boats it could be the next step because the majority of the drone boats are eliminated in a very close proximity from the ship from this distance you may fire rockets more or less precisely one more big kaboom in russia the gas pipeline just burst into flames no one knows what happened there but usually they have those kind of the kabooms once per month on their oil or gas pipelines soon the president of ukraine zelensky is going to visit the united states of america for united nations summit and obviously he will meet with joseph biden hopefully biden will announce the attack and supplies for ukrainian army well actually today's attack on the yevpatory was outstanding first of all the unique equipment was demolished that cost 1.2 billion dollars but the main thing that russia is unable to restore those unique raiders the german members of parliament are pushing the councillor Scholz to sign the agreement of supplying the Taurus cruise missiles to ukrainian army but Scholz is still thinking the rammstein meeting is going to happen on 19th of september hopefully Scholz will sign the agreement as Joseph Biden too. Some of the Ukrainian military pilots have already visited Sweden and tested the Gripen airplanes. Sweden is looking for opportunity to deliver those to Ukrainian army, but probably not this year and not the next one. We have some good news about the F-16 Ukrainian pilot training program. According to the United States military officials, the training time could be reduced down to three months because our guys are handling those airplanes very well. However, three months is the minimum possible period for Ukrainian fighters. Pentagon has created the new monitoring group that will monitor the military help for Ukraine. I think it should have been done long time ago. Yes, all of the military units that are coming from our allies are taking place to fight on the front lines but we also have the financial help and the ukrainian government is corrupt to the bones president zelensky asked for the international help but people see how this help handled by the ukrainian government there were numerous of the scandals involving the ukrainian officials and what is terrifying including the military officials like ex-defense minister reznikov if you google reznikov corruption scandal you'll see many of those how they purchased the food for the soldiers or uniform for the prices that are five times higher than that equipment really cost so i'm sure that it's the proper way to monitor the western help that goes to ukraine and especially to ukrainian army if there was my will i would totally reset and erase the ukrainian government as it is because even during the war they want to get money from the budget so definitely corruption is killing ukraine at some point even more than the russian army so pentagon good move i do support it the vehicle losses according to the oryx resource for the last four days russia lost 69 of the vehicles ukraine 38 about tanks russia lost 10 ukraine 2 
As usual, there is the great difference in losses between Russia and Ukraine. It amazes me because the Ukrainian army is now on a counteroffensive operation, so attack inside. So Ukraine should be losing many more of the vehicles. I guess that the quality of the Western-made equipment, weaponry basically, plays a great role in this war. Russia continued to pick their old T-55 Soviet-made tanks from the storages. Those were made then Stalin was still alive. From the pictures presented, those are well maintained, let's say, but there is no any kind of the modernization. And as you can see, they are now on the military field for the exercise. So soon they will go to Ukraine probably. The Russian military bloggers already said that it's the catastrophe for the Russian army if they gonna use those tanks. This day, one year ago, there was the serious incident between the Russian fighter jet and the British spy airplane over the Black Sea. So what happened? Actually, the Russian pilot misunderstood the command from the ground and attacked the British military airplane with two of the missiles. The first one missed the target because of the breakdown of the aiming equipment. The second missile disassembled from the airplane and just fell down there was the problem with the rocket engine. I put more details on my Telegram channel. So my friends, I highly recommend you to subscribe for my Telegram because there I post regularly the information that could be interesting for you. So the Russian defense minister apologized for the incident and said that there were some of the technical issues with the Russian airplane. But actually it was misunderstanding between the ground control and the Russian pilot pilot was sure that he was ordered to target the British airplane. That is how stupid they are. So I would say that Russians are very lucky actually that their missiles didn't work because if they had shut down the British military airplane there would have been dramatic consequences for Russia itself. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, there will be some of the links available in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.